the earliest humans could have been making fires 400,000 years ago, back when they were still Neanderthals. This is 350,000 years older than we initially thought. Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra and you're watching Scientifix, where I will be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. A major discovery in the UK's Suffolk region could completely change how we view the history of humankind and especially our biggest innovations. Archaeologists from the UK found a patch of burnt land, some fire-cracked tools and pieces of iron pyrite, which is one of the oldest minerals used to start fires. This is solid evidence that people, or living beings, were deliberately making fires and not just using natural wildfires. All this stuff was then geochemically dated and found to be from around 400,000 years ago, when even Homo sapiens did not exist. Why does this matter so much? Well, the discovery and use of fires by humans marks a turning point in history. It's what led to a chain of developments like cooked food, smelted weapons and protection from predators. There was evidence of early human species using natural fires even 1.2 million years ago in Africa. But the only evidence we had of Homo sapiens actually creating fire by rubbing two stones together or any other deliberate method was from France from 50,000 years ago. Now, with this Suffolk discovery, we know that humankind has been doing this for much longer and that this knowledge and technological innovation was probably passed down through the years and generations and even species. Next up, in a new breakthrough for neurobiology, scientists from Northwestern University in the US have developed a very small wireless device that can directly converse with the brain using light signals. This implant is attached to the scalp and it sends signals using LED lights to the brain and bypasses the body's normal neural pathways. These signals of red light then activate some genetically engineered neurons in the brain that will respond to this light. It was tested by the scientists in mouse models and the signals were used to transmit certain commands to the brains of the mice. The mice learned to understand these commands and even completed behavioral tasks like traveling to the correct nook in a chamber where the experiments were being conducted. This opens the door to future technologies that could restore lost senses, provide sensory feedback for prosthetic limbs, modulate pain without drugs, or help control robotic devices directly with the brain. It helps that this device is thinner than a credit card and it's the size of a small coin, meaning that it's not intrusive. Next up, for the first time ever, scientists observed how solar neutrinos interact with carbon atoms to convert into nitrogen-13 atoms. This discovery is huge in particle physics because of the sheer difficulty of observing anything to do with neutrinos in general. They are notoriously mysterious particles, and even though we know that they are produced in the sun during nuclear reactions, we know little else about them. More importantly, while we do know that neutrinos interact with matter, there's little documented evidence of it. So this new study is very significant. This time, Oxford University physicists observed solar neutrinos reacting with carbon atoms in an underground lab called SNO Lab in Canada. The reason this lab is located 2 kilometers underground is to prevent background radiation and other cosmic rays from interrupting neutrino signals, which are already very faint. In this lab, the scientists saw how neutrinos interacted with carbon-13 atoms, which are a rare isotope of carbon, and they formed nitrogen-13, which is a radioactive material. This is the first time we observed solar neutrinos interacting with carbon and it gives rare insight into how neutrinos behave in space, especially in the sun. Also, this rare experimental setup could lead to more such studies on neutrino reactions with matter and it could help us understand solar physics more deeply. Finally, a study by King's College London has found that dark chocolate has some chemical compounds that slow down natural aging. The compound is known as theobromine and it naturally occurs in dark chocolate. Researchers analyzed blood samples from more than 1600 people across Europe and found that people with higher levels of theobromine had a biological age that was younger than their actual age. 
biological age reflects how well the body is functioning using DNA markers. Theobromine, which is a cocoa alkaloid known to benefit heart health, may influence aging by affecting how genes are switched on and off in the human body. These findings hint at how everyday foods may shape long-term health. But the researchers in the study were quick to warn that this is not a reason to eat more dark chocolate, which also contains sugar and fat. The key is moderation and understanding the links between daily food consumption and its micro-level impact on our body. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into The Print.